Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Daredevil Black Wid Widow Abattoir, the last Marvel graphic novel. Literally. Well, I guess I should say technically. Uh, but before I start, Impossible Stars graphic novel just got to 49,000 with 929 backers. Uh, once I get to 50,000, we unlock the uh, stretch goal of uh, spot gloss on the cover. Then I'll start mentioning the the others. I'm uh, working on the Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar variant cover, but that's going really great. Uh, thanks to everyone. So I mentioned this before. Uh, Marvel Marvel has graphic novels, but they also have the official Marvel graphic novel collection. Back in the day in America, comics would just be floppies, and then once a new floppy came out, it's just kind of gone. Um, so uh, they started doing trade paperbacks, which is uh, you know, um, collecting whatever the nine issues of the Dark Phoenix saga. Uh, Claremont didn't need 22 issues, he could do it in nine. Uh, and they would collect that into a trade paperback, obviously, the Frank Miller stuff. But then there's graphic novels, and the, and the point about a graphic novel it was original, it was created as a whole, uh, to um, be put out as one story. Uh, so this is a Marvel graphic novel. It's a line of graphic novel trade paperbacks. Okay. I know I just said graphic novel and trade paperbacks are different things. That, that's on them. <laughs> it's also a publishing term, but generally in comics, trade paperback means a collection of floppies that have been put together, usually because they're consecutive or of one storyline. Uh, or graphic novel is like, and then in manga, they say OGN to kind of even make it more uh, definitive. Um, the books were published in an oversized format, 8.5 by 11 inches, similar to French albums. In response, DC Comics established a competitor, nine, a competitor line known as DC Graphic Novel. So it went from 82 to 93. And some of these are quite famous. The death of uh, Captain Marvel in 1982 from Jim Starlin. Uh, the New Mutants were actually introduced in the fourth one. Uh, X-Men God Loves Man Kills. I remember that being at like most uh, bookstores. Then there's kind of like Super Boxers. <laughs> I remember Super Boxers for two things. Number one, uh, it was in like every quarter box, you know, of the late 80s. Number two, since it had different dimensions, it fit in there oddly. Um, yeah, the Futurians, uh, a lot of stuff people just really don't. The Aladdin effect. You see that very quickly they kind of lost the plot it should have been this is an amazing story but then it was just like or it can be super boxers <laughs> revenge of the living monolith which was basically just a fill-in issue of the avengers um the she hulk that was a pretty good one but again a lot of these you know sometimes these really so you had like amazing spider-man hooky uh, with art by Bernie Wrightson. So you kind of understood, oh, it's Bernie Wrightson. It's full color painting. You understood why it was a big deal. But then it's like Alien Legion. It's like that just could have been a one shot or, you know. Uh, so um, very, very quickly it lost the plot. And I mean, they came out steadily. I got into comics in um, 1988, like on a weekly basis. And I remember all of these being advertised in Marvel Age. I mean, but it's like, who framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> the Dreamwalker? Yeah, I barely even remember that. And that was like in 1989. So uh, it, it basically was a concept that was committed to for, you know, 11 years. But it was never really optimized, I will say. And then there was this weird thing where several of them at the end had Black Widow. So you had... And I do not remember Black Widow being popular she was just a member of the avengers she would pop up in you know captain america and stuff like that but in the last few years they had the black widow the coldest war which i guess had a whole bunch of uh, artists then you had uh I, I reviewed this one a while ago punisher black widow that was actually okay and then daredevil black widow and like <laughs> What's going on was, does anyone remember a push in the early 1990s to really make Black Widow a thing? Uh, so it's the last one. It's number 75. And quite appropriately, uh, Jim Starlin wrote, well, he wrote a bunch of them, but he wrote the first one in 82 and he wrote the last one in 83. 
Uh, he wrote several uh, in between. But uh, this one, I you know, while I'm re reading something, I'm coming up with a concept for the video and the video title. And I, I was going to call this a forgotten classic, but forgotten implies that people knew it at one time and then forgot about it. This, I am assuming that the orders, I mean, there was only one, there was uh, three in 1992 and only one in 93. I'm assuming the orders were so incredibly low. Uh, I don't even remember flipping through this. And usually I would flip through like everything, even if I could only afford like three comics a week. But I would flip through like every single Marvel comic. Um, so I'm guessing incredibly low sales. I don't remember seeing this in, uh, even in, in used bookstores and half price books. I've never seen a physical copy of this. Uh, so it's freaking amazing. It is so, so good. Uh, it's also kind of shocking because it's really, really, really dark. It's about child abuse and murder. And um, uh, it's uh, so it's uh, Jim Starlin writing and Joe Chiodo, which usually I, I try to give some context when I'm talking about someone. I'll say, oh, Joe Chiodo. And this thing just completely froze. I mean, why wouldn't it freeze? I mean, it's only 2020 been around for 20 years but that's fine comicsology stay losing so um jim starlin writing joe chioda Chi joe chioda artist so like i said usually i'll try to contextualize and i'll say he was known for it i don't know i remember like the art of Wildstorm. he did like a couple pinups i think he eventually ended up doing some stuff ish at Wildstorm. i i don't know like I remember his name. I remember his art style. I can't really name anything he did besides a few pinups. Uh, but, you know, we start off with a file. One of the things that I really liked about this, it's it's before S.H.I.E.L.D. was Starfleet. Now, they did have a flying headquarters, but a lot of it was very, very, like, you'll even see this, like, in um, Electra Assassin. Like, they'll, they'll have these super advanced... Uh, <laughs> headquarters but then they're just basically detectives with like snub nose revolvers <laughs> in a you know freaking holster underneath their uh trench coat so it's pretty funny so you know it's shield so we just get you know an actual file folder with uh some notes on her i always like reading said the base of operations mobile alabama it's like okay no impact no idea on that one i'm sure that was established somewhere and then uh daredevil i really like daredevil so it's called Daredevil Black Widow, but it's very obviously Black Widow Daredevil, and I'm thinking they just switched it at the end uh, because she's the main character. He is in there, but he's basically presented as Hero Man. <laughs> I, I always talk about this. You know, Captain America is popular, but he really wasn't popular until uh, the movies. Um, when I got into comics, he was basically Adventure Man. They're like, Oh, there's a magical ruby in South America. Captain America, go look for it. And there's more to it than that. But he wasn't like, you know, now people say like Captain America. He was just like this kind of like old style World War II hero. And they didn't quite know what to do with him. So he would just do generic adventures. Now, Daredevil started off and they didn't know what to do with him for like the first, you know, 15 years. They're just like, oh, he's kind of like. Spider-Man, I guess, kind of, acrobat. Uh, and then, you know, obviously uh, Frank Miller really defined him. But he became a, a hero who's kind of like his telenovela storyline kind of overtook. Hey, there's a bad guy robbing a bank. You know, there's a killer on the loose uh, who isn't Bullseye or Elektra. Uh, so he's in this, but he's just basically like the muscle. He's hero man. So uh, there's some S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that are uh, telepaths. And telepaths in general are being kidnapped. By the way, go find this. It's on Comixology. I don't usually buy the expensive ones. So I forget. It's either unlimited or it was pretty cheap. I'm thinking it was unlimited. Uh, I, While I have grown to like digital, I'm not spending more than like $5. No, this is a file. I'm being given access to a file that's already on a server. Like, I'm not paying more than $5. Uh, so, uh, uh Telepaths are being kidnapped and killed, including ones that work for S.H.I.E.L.D. So it's uh, Natasha is asked to help out. Uh, she We get an in-media rest, which means they basically cut to the later part of the story, the most dramatic part of the story, 
and then they're going to tell you how she got here. Um, some really just beautiful, beautiful art. It's funny because usually you can point at something and you can say like, oh, this is related to this. I don't know. Like, I would say this is related to like, just, I don't know, illustrations from, I don't know, fashion magazines in the 1980s. This day, boy, Comixology is having some problems today. Talk about access to a server. Can I get access to a better server? Uh, so um, it starts off and I totally understand why, pe why some people would mentally check out. Uh, while some of this is quite amazing, some of this is not quite ready for prime time. Yeah, especially these two guys, you're kind of like, uh, really? We're going to go with that? Uh, and even some some of the Daredevil looks like really great. Boy, this, <laughs> this thing is just chugging today. Even like, okay, like that arm is really good. But again, that pose is a little, a little stiff. Uh, it looks to me to be colored pencils, though I'm not an expert in these type of things that aren't ink or pencil. <laughs> um, but it might be some sort of chalk or something like that. Uh, but uh, again, it's a very stripped down shield where it's like, hey, why'd you lose them? It's like, oh, because there's a lot of traffic. <laughs> um, obviously, some people have flying cars and some people don't. There's a whole thing about traffic and Daredevil like um, having to drive a car, which he kind of famously did uh, in uh, Born Again. Not very well. He's better at it. Uh, he drives, uh, I think, upstate. So this is what I like. So you show... Uh, Nick Fury, he's at this, you know, super huge computer bank, and yet he's basically doing things you could do on a phone. He's like, uh, oh, it's getting cold and the roads are getting slippery. He's like, okay, just keep on it. You know, he, did, he can't reroute a shield satellite to melt all of the snow. Uh, so we get to see into uh, the life of this uh, little girl. She had a very abusive uh, upbringing, and it made her very, very, very angry. I was kind of shocked uh, at several points of this. Now, this is kind of her memory, which makes her father this like demonic monster. And her, her mother wasn't that great either, but she was murdered and uh, the father gets away with it. And then we get into this like kind of like nightmare world. Um, and I even stuff like this, like this panel, I just love this. So we're seeing through her eyes as she's, you know, learning about her psychic powers and what she can do to people. And then there's a whole thing of daredevils just driving he knows he can they know where you know black widow is but it's gonna take a while there's you know roads are slippery and he's not really great at driving so we see her you know uh finally she practices on her uh fellow classmates and then eventually she says yeah i got it to you know kill my father and she says i left him with just enough awareness to know what was coming down but he didn't have the will to do anything about it. My lumbering parental parent went to the roof without comment or complaint, perfectly obedient, disciplined, without me ever having to lay a hand on him. And then obviously, you know, she uh, gets him to jump. He dies and says, I guess this makes me an orphan. How sad. Now, this is kind of a memory because, you know, she can see uh, she's she's basically letting uh, Black Widow see what made her. Now again, then we cut to this, and this this Daredevil is just freaking awful. The funny thing is that in a couple panels, we're going to see this really cool Daredevil. Uh, so uh, basically, she's explaining her whole you know uh, deal, why she works with the serial killer who's just a serial killer, but she's grown to you know hate uh, humanity, enjoy uh, killing people, and she wants to be the only telepath around. So I'm trying. <laughs> I've shown a lot, I'm trying not to show all of it, but I want to get to this one Daredevil, which is like one of the coolest. So at one point, Black Widow is just, you know, tied up and she's trying to get out. This effect right here, I freaking love this. Todd McFarlane has done something similar where he'll like black out the head, put it all in shadow, but show you just like the eyes and the teeth. This is very specifically something that can only be done when you're doing the penciling and, and that might actually be some ink or it just might be some pencil pressed down and then the either painting or chalk or whatever this is. So I won't show all of it, but uh, let me see if I can get back to showing the last few pages. So this was, uh, you know, it was still, what uh, if I remember correctly, DC made it solid. They said our graphic novels, stuff like uh, The Killing Joke, 
Gotham by Gaslight, they're like, it's going to be 48 pages. Work it into 48 pages. These ones, they had some wiggle room. So, but it's still within the length of the average, you know, uh, European graphic album, which would be about 48 to 60 pages. So at the end, they're just, you know, kind of recovering. And Daredevil, you know, he definitely helped. Uh, there's this weird thing where you're like, oh boy, they can't have the woman being rescued. But they did. But then, you know, they ended up getting... I would say it was kind of like when you're watching the Mission Impossible movies and they have Ethan Hawke and Ilsa Faust. Ilsa will get captured, but then she'll escape. Ethan will get captured and escape, and you know, sometimes by themselves, sometimes with the help of others. So it doesn't make l l any of them look like a damsel in distress, but it also doesn't look like to like SJW. It's like, oh, the woman has to do everything, and the man can't help at all. Uh, so then we cut to a flying helicarrier where all of these you know 1950s detectives operate out of. And uh, I, I always love scenes like this where they're just kind of they're alive, you know, they've been through some stuff, and they're just kind of uh, you know dealing with it. And uh, Natasha says, I'm lucky you got there in time for me. And he's like, how you doing? She's like, you know, I'm healing. He's like, no, how are you doing? Because they went through some real stuff. And look at this. this That's acting. That is acting. That's not a drawing. I mean, it is, it's a drawing. It's a painting. But it's, it's acting. That's beautiful. So then she basically says, she, she says, I spent 18 hours with two maniacs. Got trapped in the mind of one of them. Saw the world through her twisted perspective. Felt her sick joy in butchery. In many ways, I actually became part of Rose, and she became part of me. And then they just hug. I mean, these people are obviously lovers at one point, but I would say they were friends and, and compatriots for, for much longer, and she's in a bad way. A Daredevil took an axe to the chest, but it was very brief. It was, his was mainly like, <laughs> they're like, S.H.I.E.L.D., we, we've created a... Uh, we sh we've created an advanced computer technology called MapQuest. Drive to, <laughs> drive to the FedEx on a, what was it, was there one? There's one on like 41st Street near Bryant Park and ask them to print you out a copy. It's basically, he's driving, he's driving most of it. And then he gets in a very short fight, takes an ax to the chest and then uh, he, he helps out at the end. But uh, this is, she's just, she doesn't know where, where her head's at. She says, uh, time, it's, that's what it's going to take. I'd like to be alone now, if you don't mind. She says, yeah, I'll get over it. I'm one tough broad who's seen a lot worse. I've faced monsters before. I'll bounce back. The only thing I wonder about, though... Is whether I'm ever going... If, is whether I'm ever again going to feel clean. The end. Wow! So I looked and saw if there was any like coverage of this at the time. No, it just it looks like it was a very limited release. It just got got thrown out there at the end of an eleven year experiment. And wow, go find this. I mean, the easiest way is obviously Comicsology, but I think you'll really be rewarded if you find a physical uh, copy of this. But go check it out. The last graph Marvel graphic novel, technically. Um, uh, Daredevil Black Widow Abattoir. I almost said Avatar. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, Patreon, and the Indiegogo. Your uh, funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I will have uh, new comic reviews up all this week. Thanks. Bye.